Uh, thanks, Larry, for the uh, uh, for the go ahead for our talk. Uh, we certainly have a, a great lineup here today. I already introduced myself, Su Ling. Uh, I don't think that you did. Perhaps you want to introduce yourself and then move into uh, the slides. Would that work for you? Sure, absolutely. Hi, I am uh, Su Ling Leon. Let me bring up my slides. Um, So I was, thank you very much for uh, the invitation for me to share with you about our three plus three program uh, as a framework to build primary care capacity. Uh, I serve as the Assistant Dean for Pathways Innovation at Penn State College of Medicine. So in this group, I probably do not need to share with you that um, it's been pretty well uh, known that uh, if the, the health of the population is best when 50% of the physicians are primary care physician, and yet we only have 30% of our physician in, the, in this country that are primary care physician. And there's been also a projection that we are severely short of primary care physician. The projection is going to be that by 2025, we're going to kind of be short of 90,000 primary care physician. And on the other side, uh, medical students are graduating with huge amount of debt. Uh, AAMC estimate about 200,000 uh, average per student. Um, and these high costs for medical education is really a hardship for our students, as well as the fact that our graduates from medical school are getting older and older. They are like eight years older than just a few decades ago. So um, there are, so we kind of looked at the, uh, the possibility of starting medical school in three years. And there are many benefits in doing that. So one is you save a year of tuition, but you also enter practice a year earlier. So if you do some basic math, you know, there, this is about $270,000 of gain, financial gain for these students. Um, and then if you are conditionally accepted to a residency program, there's also saving of 10 to 20,000 just from saving from interviews. But I think really the, the really exciting part is the efficiency of the medical curriculum. Uh, we could link the medical school curriculum with the residency program, creating a six year instead of seven. And, and you can really do some very interesting and, and, and effective mentoring from, for the students. So by having this linkage uh, from medical school to residency, it gave us a great opportunity to really custom design the training and what is really best training for a family physician. Uh, because we're able to create the curriculum, uh, it gives us a lot of latitude in doing that. Um, so we can actually incorporate those learners into the residency program, into our department early on. And we can also begin to introduce clinical exposure from, date, from the first year of medical education. Because continuity is so important in the training of family physicians, we purposely replace the clerkship year using a longitudinal integrated clerkship of the LIC instead of the block clerkship. Um, we all know about this leaky pipeline. You know, a lot of times people come in medical school saying they're interested in primary care or family medicine, only that sometimes they they get lost. <laughs> so by having this three-year program. Uh, they, they are committed to family medicine from day one. And we can mentor them and really try, try to get them engaged in family medicine, uh, doing research, national presentation, and, and, and those sort of things that I think help uh, keep the student engaged. So, um, so Penn State launches three-year program in 20, so 2014, uh, we call it uh, three plus three. Here are some, some of our, our learners. Um, uh, Michael is a, is a graduate in the, med in, in the residency program now. So three years in medical school, followed by three years of residency at, uh, at uh, Hershey. We also have a residency program in internal medicine. <clears throat> so, so a little bit more about the customized and individualizing education for our students. So the very first year, we have something called career confirmation elective, which is kind of really making sure they try on the shoes and make sure that family medicine indeed is what they have chosen, is the right fit for them. Um, 
we also connect them with the residency and the, uh, the residents and also the faculty. Uh, we have a very purposeful mentoring program and advising program for them as well. Um, we also have the flexibility of deceleration if they should choose to not no longer accelerate. In terms of the application, uh, usually the in terms of the uh, of the curriculum, so they usually start with an elective in the first year of in the spring of the first year. Um, there, the the, the uh, summer between the first and second year, they do not have that summer off. They would be doing clerkship and elective. We have moved the step exam to after clerkship. Uh, and the family medicine is uh, is an LIC. And let me just kind of walk you through this a bit. Um, so during the first, we call it phase one, which is the first 18 months of medical school, they are doing the same curriculum as their peers. You know, their basic science of lectures, their health system courses and, and the foundational courses are really the same. But in the afternoon, average is about one half day a week, they will be doing extra courses. So in this situation, this is the acceleration. They do a medical home course, uh, in the summer they'll do elective. And then when they come back from the second year, they do a family medicine clerkship. And then during that uh, clerkship year, they'll do a LIC. And then the phase three is when they basically complete the requirement, such as you know, doing the, um, the, the acting internship, the, uh, the step exam, and then completing whatever electives or requirement that they need to do before they graduate. <clears throat> so in terms of um, tuition, we basically charge them, we look at it as uh, their tuition is equivalent to a four year program, but we give them a year scholarship uh, to, to, for, for that one year. Uh, however, if they do not complete the program as design, then uh, this scholarship will be converted to a loan. And all along the way, students are, uh, are able to reverse back to the four-year program. So one example would be if they do not meet academic standards, or they're simply not interested in accelerating or no longer interested in family medicine, or wanted to stay at the, uh, at the Penn State residency program. We often ask this question about who, what, what type of student would do well in this type of program. Uh, we, 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 they tend to be mature students and they tend to have excellent academic records. Uh, Self-directed learners are very um, appropriate for this type of program, but the most important thing is that they need to have a strong interest and commitment to family medicine and, and Penn State. And our students uh, meet this uh, requirement quite well. And generally they come in pretty amazing life experiences. So just a word or two about the, um, the clerkship year. So on the top, the block clerkship is pretty standard, you know, where you do one clerkship at a time, in this case, internal medicine, pediatric, and then so forth. Whereas the LIC, you do all the clerkship together, and then they also get to follow a panel patient that kind of serve, they serve as their personal uh, student physicians. And that's kind of where a lot of the benefit comes in. And the study have shown that people, students who have gone through a LIC in general are very satisfied with their education. Uh, they tend to be more patient-centered. Uh, they also tend to have a lot more active engagement and hands-on participation in, in a lot of their uh, activities in the clerkship. Um, they also have, they do just as well in the exams, uh, it, but they also tend to have a better knowledge retention. So in terms of the application process, so once they're accepted to Penn State College of Medicine, they complete a secondary uh, application to apply to the three plus three accelerator program. And then they're followed that by a interview with the steering committee. We also have a website that talks about the program. So I just wanna share with you a couple of slides. So not everybody is a big fan of three-year programs. Uh, the critic would tell us that they wouldn't get as good an education because they are, because it's shortened and that they may not be prepared for the residency program or that they may uh, be burned out uh, from doing all this. 
So we set out to do a study in, across nine school that nine medical school that had residency that had accelerated program. And as you can see here, uh, the orange is where the um, accelerated students, and this is how they rank, uh, completed the, uh, the AMC graduation questionnaire and, and answering these type of questions. Um, so the orange is the accelerated students um, in the night school. And the green is uh, all the other peers in the four year programs that are in those nice medical school. And then the purple is um, all the medical school that graduated that year uh, across the country. As you can see, in terms of satisfaction with their medical education, th they're quite similar, both for 2017 and 2018. And this is uh, asking about preparedness for residency. And again, as you can see, there really is not much uh, differences across the three groups. This is a very busy slide, but just want to call, point you out to in terms of the burnout. Uh, so th there really is very similar in terms of burnout. But if anything, there was a couple of things that they are actually, the student actually in the Excel program do, do better. Um, one of the area is the emotional climax, and the other is the faculty interaction. So their learning environment and the faculty interaction that they actually rank those area higher. And in terms of stu student debt, um, you can see that um, in the, the group in the three year programs actually have less debt uh, in these area are statistically significant. Um, so some of them actually even graduate with no debt, but majority of them actually graduate in the with the between the 150,000 or less uh, category. So uh, based on that study, it, it, we found that compared to the four year MD peers, the graduate from the Accelerate program, feel just as satisfied with their medical education and sometimes in some area a little bit better. They feel just as prepared for residency. Uh, they have pretty equivalent rates of bur uh, burnout, but they definitely have lower debt. And here's a, a, a little bit of study here. We looked at some of our graduate and, and, and look at some of the things that um, I thought was interesting. So we have currently one graduate who is in practice now and he's practiced in a rural area. Uh, one, we have two third year resident who are graduating soon and one already join our residency, join our faculty and the other may also possibly joining our faculty. So 50 to, to 100 percent uh, joining our faculty is, is, is quite quite wonderful. Um, and then six out of the 13 um, uh, mm -hmm. students that we have now are interested in practicing in rural area. And eight out of the 13, which is a 62% is interested in practicing underserved communities. Uh, two of the six um, uh, residents are uh, two residents. Um, so that's a 34%. Uh, two of those, um, two of the 10 students are uh, served as president of the FMIG. So we're quite, quite proud of their achievement. And so these are some of our students. So in, in conclusion, um, the three-year accelerator program is, I think is an emerging solution for addressing the primary care workforce shortage. It is also a disruptive innovation in medical education that could potentially increase the number of US medical school medical student choosing a career in primary care or areas of physician workforce need. Uh, it could also prepare primary care physician more efficiently and quickly with, no, with lower student debt. Thanks, Su Ling. I think I'm going to just jump in with a couple of comments on my own as we wind down here. Uh, based on my uh, participation since uh, the program started and in teaching and advising several of the students, I have several observations that I wanted to synthesize. One is that this program is not for everyone. Um, it's for a particularly mature student who already pretty know, pretty much well knows where they're going to go and what they want to do. Uh, this means in some cases an older student or a more mature student, as you said. Uh, and it is very appealing to students for whom it fits because it saves a year of time and money, which is pretty powerful. Uh, the second thing I wanted to say is that it tends to attract high quality students. They are a pleasure to work with. Uh, they are uh, highly motivated. They are achievers. They generally have a good sense of time management 
And uh, the other thing that surprised me that I wasn't aware of, especially in small group teaching, I observed it that they are deferred to by many of the other students because they not only are high performers, but they accelerate their clinical learning ahead of their peers. So they, uh, the other students, especially in, for example, clinical skills instruction, other students would be asking them for advice in classes, which I thought uh, really was an interesting change of dynamic, which may carry over into how family medicine is viewed in the student classes as well. Uh, the third thing I wanted to, to mention uh, is that this is good for residency recruitment as well. We didn't specifically mention that, but it guarantees uh, students going into the residency classes as well. And the third thing is that we're, as you referred to a bit, uh, Su Ling, we're seeing a little bit of increased uh, diversity, which we very much welcome uh, as the program is maturing. Uh, one of the students I work with has a background in a faith in Islam. Another student who came in this year as a first year student, his eth ethnic history is from Nigeria. And it's really nice to see the diversity expanding as the program expands as well. So I just wanted to, to share a few of those uh, reflections. And I think it's a very interesting and promising um, option for um, other medical schools. Uh, and I think this very well will likely expand uh, in the future. Thank you.